Today, we're going to un-CSS your CSS or something. Before we begin, this video sponsor is Linode and they make it easy and affordable to host your site, app, or service on whatever technology stack you use. Unlike entry-level hosting services, Linode is a step up to powerful, fast, fully configurable cloud computing. With server plans starting at just $5 plus no hidden fees or surprise outages, Linode offers a no-nonsense hosting at a price you can afford. So sign up now using the link below to get a $20 credit on your new Linode account. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon, of course, Satcher.com. So just a few days ago, I talked about Bootstrap and one of the things that I mentioned uh, is that you can run Bootstrap through something called Purge CSS or UnCSS. They both do the same thing. And some of you were interested in how that actually works. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about. So of course, you can you can run UnCSS, which is what we're gonna be using uh, on anything. It doesn't have to be uh, Bootstrap. It could be any project. If you're working within your own large custom project, sometimes uh, your, your, your CSS that you're working with, you may end up where you have CSS rule sets that aren't used anymore by your HTML. And so that's what this does. It compares your HTML versus your CSS. It looks for any of the selectors in your HTML and, and it makes sure that, you know, if there's anything that's not being used in your CSS, it's gonna remove them. Uh, so let me just show you a quick example here. This is the very simple design that I did uh, for that tutorial a few days ago. And if we come out here, in uh, Chrome, there's a way that you can check if there's unused CSS from within the Chrome DevTools itself. So if you hit Control Shift I, and we come to Sources, and then you come out here, and you click on More Tools, and you click on, uh, it's not showing up because I already have it. Oh, it's right there. Uh, it's called Coverage. When you click Coverage, it'll show up down here, and then now you can, press record and that's going to give you the assets that you have so if we refresh this there we go we could see we have our bootstrap minified version and it's massive it's 155 kb because uncss hasn't been ran through this yet but you'll see 97.4 percent of it is not used so if you click this, it will also show you in red all the rule sets that aren't currently being used on this project. And so this is a great use case for running on CSS through completely. All right, so let's go ahead and before we get started, make sure to subscribe. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we're gonna go ahead here in the project folder um, and in Visual Studio Code, I'm just gonna get up the, the terminal actually. Uh, and so let's go view terminal and we're going to install just a couple things here so first we'll install the parcel bundler all right npm i parcel bundler and we'll install that globally i already did it i uh, and if you haven't done it in a while and you already do have it installed then just run it again i did it today though so run that command and then we're going to create a uh, package json file so npm init hyphen y in the project folder you see it creates that for us and then we can go ahead and uh, import our css i uh, the correct way so if you're using sas as i'm using here then we'll come to index.html and the nice thing about parcel is we can just specify our sas files directly inside of here in the index.html or we can completely emit these and import them within the javascript so let's add the JavaScript right now. So we'll come down here to the bottom of this file and we will put in script source is forward slash index.js. All right, so that's kind of the, uh, the entry point of our app for um, parcel and it's going to be blank. Uh, this is just something that you do anyways and this is where you could import, for instance, import, I. Uh, Let's see here, CSS and then main.sass. Uh, although you'd first want to import your bootstrap up here, uh, right above in this line and then save it. But we're not gonna do it that way. You could do it that way if you wanted to, um, but we're just gonna just keep the imports up here and everything will still just work fine. All right, so next up, we're going to create a uh, post CSS config.json file. Um, before we do that, I'll just show you though, um, in the terminal, we can run at this point, 
parcel index.html and it will launch a uh, a server here or at least a, I thought it would we can click this there we go I uh, and here we go so this I uh, I believe has uh, live reload uh, hot reloading enabled I believe it does actually let's check out and see if it does anyways I just want to my blog too yeah it does uh, so that's great so good thing about parcel it'll set this all up for you um, so we want to of course the purpose of this tutorial is to set up what's called post CSS with parcel all right so to do that we're going to go ahead and create or install rather our post css all right so we're going to go back to here let's hit control c to get out of there hit y yes and we're going to npm install these are all dev dependencies so we'll put hyphen d and we will specify post css modules and then we want to use uh, un-CSS. So post-CSS has a ton of different plugins that are related to CSS uh, that you can install. And if you're kind of curious about what all of those are, we can just type post-CSS here. We can go here to post-CSS. There's a plugin section. And there's a bunch right here that you can see. Um, so if I type in un-CSS, it's not even showing there. It's kind of strange. Maybe there's a, a larger list, but if we type in post-CSS, un-CSS, we can go ahead and see um, exactly what you need to install for this to work. So we have post-CSS, un-CSS, and un-CSS itself. So we have our post-CSS modules this is the base that's required to use post-CSS in parcel. And then we're going to in install those two as well. So I'll let this run. All right, and it's done. And by the way, when I ran that the first time, it gave me an error. Um, I, had, I simply had to reload Visual Studio Code and then rerun that installation, uh, that, that same line that we just uh, entered. Um, so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create our post-CSS config file. All right, so that's kind of how you hook it up. Um, and this is this information, by the way, comes from Parcel.js. So there's a, a post-CSS section in their documentation. It'll provide you with more information. So postcss.config.json. All right, so now what we'll do is go ahead and specify module.exports, our plugins. All right, so the plugins array, so it's going to require postcss hyphen uncss. And then we can open it up within uh, an, op an object of options here. And we're going to specify the HTML. All right, so it needs to know where, which HTML files uh, that needs to be passed through to compare it to the CSS, uh, so it can remove those rule sets. So uh, HTML and it's an array, and it can accept multiple files, obviously, and also wildcards. So if you wanted to do like all HTML in that given folder, or uh, just index.html, which is what we're going to do. And there we go. So now we should be ready to rock and so what we'll do is down here all we have to do is type uh, type parcel um, notice we have a, a, a dist folder already so let's remove that real quick so let's delete that and that dist folder by the way was generated the first time we wa we ran parcel um, index.html so let's run this now all right don't worry about this could not load existing source map um, but we can see we have our new in our dist folder right here. All right, so uh, if we click this, we'll see this is the amount of uh, CSS from our bootstrap min file right here. Uh, if we compare that to the bootstrap min file right here, there is a ton more as you can see. So it greatly reduced the size. And we can compare this, of course, if we reveal an explorer. Uh, this is the regular CSS before it being ran 153 KB. We go right here to dist. We'll see it's now 11 KB. All right, just ignore the map file. That's not used anyways. Um, so it works like that. Very good. Uh, great. So, and you know that it's going to run through both of these files, like our main file. There was no unused CSS in here, as far as I know. So if we just test this to make sure it works, if we type in bro rule set and we'll say, I don't know, font size one EM. All right, let's just delete this. We'll run through this again. 
parcel index.html. We will see if we go back to our main CSS file, bro does not exist. So it's working in the manner that we want it to. And by the way, if we wanted to you know, make sure everything still works with this distribution version of the project, then we just go to CD into dist. Uh, you can NPM install something called light server globally on your machine. And then if you ever want to run uh, in, a, in a simple uh, server environment, the uh, your disk folder, sorry, I'm being slow, we can run a uh, light server. All right, so now it's gonna load up everything that's inside of that disk folder. And we can see um, that everything still works as it's supposed to. And if we get out the uh, console here, go to sources and coverage, click record, we could still see that uh, there is some unused CSS uh, in our bootstrap JavaScript file. And it will let you know, like for instance, the comments, this is unused. And the uh, a hover, this obviously wasn't used because I didn't actually hover over it. Um, and then there's some other things here that I'm not sure why bootstrap included, um, like a WebKit file upload button. I have no clue why that is still there. Um, so it's not perfect, but uh, it still does uh, a, a decent job. Um, and, and again, some of these may be used based on your viewport. Like for instance, the media queries will be um, made in red as well, but they, you know, they could still possibly be used. Uh, so you can see it like it says 67.9% for unused bytes. But if I um, come in here, so it's 67.5 refresh, it's now 71.7. .7. So it all depends on the viewports and which selectors it's going to show anyhow. So a final note coming down here, if we go back to our post CSS config, uh, you can run a lot of other plugins in conjunction with post CSS in this chain of events here. So, you know, if you wanted to remove the white space uh, and minify other areas of your CSS, for instance, like the white space, you can run the other plugins as well. Um, I believe there's CSS Nano, uh, there's Post CSS, Clean CSS, I believe. So there's a bunch of others, but you can go ahead and experiment with that as you wish on your own. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. Let me know if you did. If you did, of course, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys real soon with yet another tutorial. Goodbye.